Hi guys, coming to you in my horsey scruffs. This is my yard coat that I used to do the horses in. It's pretty gross, I'm aware, but it's warm and it's waterproof. So let's not talk about that anymore. This behind me is Florence. She is my 2007 Vauxhall Vivaro van that I purchased last year. The plan was, and still is, to partially convert her. I bought a van because partly trying to fit all my lighting equipment in a Skoda Fabia was becoming quite a challenge. It wasn't, it wasn't an estate, it was the shorter version. And secondly, I really love camping and I love going away and I do find tents can be quite restrictive when you're trying to travel. So, van. And with all that in mind, I was like, me, the person who doesn't really have much skill or ability with DIY, why not convert a van myself? It's a great idea. It's going pretty well so far. Over the summer, I didn't really have time to do a lot on it. So now I'm in my quiet season. I'm hammering on and getting it done. And I have this week off work. We're at the end of March. Currently, it is the 28th of March that I'm filming this. I'm cracking on and doing all the insulation because next weekend I'm working away for two days. And it's a two, two and a half hour commute to get there then to get home. I don't fancy doing a full day shooting, driving that distance home, driving back. Staying overnight is easier. So I need to get her in a slightly more livable state because it's pretty chilly at the minute. This week we're doing insulation. It's going okay. There's a lot of swearing involved. It's been a challenge. I have definitely cried more than once, but we are getting there. Now I have started building the bed as well. That's about 80% done, but insulation kind of takes precedence. So I'm going to show you what I've done so far and what's to come. I'll show you like a little updates as we go along. Here's our current situation. I have insulated this, insulated this, put some in inside here as well. I've done nearly all of that wall. There's just a little bit of tape to do. I vapor sealed half of this. I need to insulate the bottom part of this. There was a little rust patch just down in the bottom. I had to trick first. You don't want moisture. Not great. I've fully vapor sealed and done this side of the van, which is great. I've got insulation in the little joists, insert thingies at the top. Slice to finger doing that. Good for me. So what's kind of left to do is I need to vapor seal these doors. When I say vapor seal, it's this shiny bubble wrap stuff, stuff, stuff that stops water, moisture getting into your insulation because that's how you rock your own van. Something I've learned. I need to get the floor up, which means dealing with the rivets, the bane of my life. Bring that up, stick some insulation underneath, whack it back down. Oh, and I forgot to mention I also took the bulkhead out, which is basically the thing that seals the front and the back of the van. That was, I knew it wasn't gonna be easy and it wasn't, but it's done. So let's crack on, get some insulation done. guys are gonna have to excuse the filming quality but as you can see got a fair bit more done all the insulation is in I just need to do the paneling now um, I'm all packed ready for two full days of freelancing ready to go everything is looking pretty good now where I'm going today is Buckinghamshire I am freelancing for a company who will be photographing the blue chip show jumping winter championships 
I'm on different hours than I expected today. I'm actually working 3 p.m. till 10 p.m. and then tomorrow morning 7 a.m. till 3 p.m. I'm not a night owl. I go to sleep at 9 p.m. That's gonna be fun. But it has worked out quite well because I've got time to get in my Friday deadlifting session. I was stressing about how I was gonna fit training in because I'm actually freelancing, not just today and tomorrow, but Sunday as well. Busy few days. Everything packed. I'm gonna head off to the gym get a deadlifting session in, have a good time, and then drive two and a half hours down to Buckingham. Go down to the stables to park up because we just haven't got room anywhere else. That's absolutely fine. Call so that lorry. brilliant. Right, in. thanks very much. So we are here. Pretty easy drive. Two and a half hours. All is good. I am parking down by the stables because they've run out of space. I should be about on time, I'm hoping. Um panicking a little bit. Hiya! Uh, yeah, yeah, they sent me down here. I'm with the official photographers for the day. Well, for the evening and tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, um, did you have a trade stand pass or not? I do not know. It literally, there's like one space and it's all okay. people that have trade That's stand fine. passes. That's um, fine. Where yeah. can I be out the way? Got to wear over trousers. It's a very glamorous job. I always wear over trousers for this because you're out in all weathers, you don't know what you're going to get and over trousers are an essential to stay warm and dry should the weather suddenly change. bag to put all my stuff in. Again, you don't know what the weather's going to do, so this is a fantastic option. I learned it from another photographer. It's a great idea. Spare battery. Second memory card, because we will be switching back and forth on cards. Card running to get rider folders uploaded as fast as possible. Lip balm. I never go without lip balm anywhere. I have one for everything. This is a monopod. Basically a tripod, but what? It saves your wrists an awful lot when you're shooting all day. You've got a heavy camera lifting up and down, up and down. It saves the joints a lot. And this is a trick I learned from these guys that I'm working for years ago. And I've done it ever since. past 11. I have just got back to my van. I'm knackered. I go to bed at night. I go to sleep at 9pm. So it's a fucking late night for me. It's a late night for me. I have just brushed my teeth. I'm going to crawl into bed and pass out. I've got an early start tonight. I start shooting at half seven. Good morning. The 6am alarm was not the one. I got to sleep at like half 11 last night. I'm awake now. Fortunately, I'm a morning person, otherwise this would be utter hell. I went and found the showers. 
great, hot showers, fabulous. I slept like a dead body. I was that tired, I just slept so well. Shower done, kettle is on, I've got breakfast ready, I've got porridge, and I am um, getting ready for day two. So this morning I am shooting the juniors. Ponies are known to be absolutely lethal. They go very fast, they take terrifying lines, and you just have to hide as close as possible to the fence that they're not yes. jumping. I am gonna be on the go all morning. It's gonna be very intense. I'm gonna be very tired, <laughs> but it's all fun. The thing I have to do in a show jumping arena, they have their set course, and I kind of have mine. So I've just got back to the van and it's just past four and I've packed everything down, put everything away, I'm ready to go home. And I've actually finished earlier than I normally would on a freelancing day. Because the days are really long, uh, the lady I'm working for is splitting everyone into shifts. So I was meant to finish about three, just ran on a little bit. The person who was meant to be filling in, who was taking over from me, um, had their own class that they were doing and covering and theirs didn't finish till later, so it's fine. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty tired. My feet ache. I'm so glad to sit down. I haven't been able to film as much as I'd hoped uh, just because I was on the indoor arena. It's a very big arena. It's very public. It's very in the public eye. I've got to be professional, unfortunately. <laughs> so I had to, I got a few clips here and there, but I didn't get as much as I'd hoped. So I've got a two and a half hour drive home ahead of me. Get back, unload some of my stuff, prep food and everything because I've got another freelancing day tomorrow where I'm covering showing for a different company. And then that's it until next week when I'm back at this venue that I'm at today, Addington Equestrian Centre, for the Pet Plan Winter Dressage Championship. So I'll be here Saturday and Sunday. Hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit more footage and show you guys a bit more of what's going on behind the scenes. But for now, I'm wiped. I cannot wait to get home. I can't wait to get a coffee en route home. That's going to be nice. Decaf because it's four o'clock. We don't, we don't live that life. I need to sleep. Yeah, so I'm gonna head home now and I'll see if I can get some stuff tomorrow. If not, see how tired I am about that, but definitely gonna get some stuff for next weekend as well. So I didn't end up going to work on Sunday. When I got home from Addington, it'd been a long day, I was very tired, just about, just coming up to seven o'clock. I'd just got in through the door, was sorting some stuff out, ready for the next day. And my mum knocks on my door, she lives across the garden, and she was looking after horses that night, our horses for that night. And she said, come out, your horse isn't right, something's very wrong. And I'm thinking, oh God, what, what's going on? So I go down the yard and I see him and he's leaning on the door, I literally physically leaning and he's got this dead eyed look. His back end's not working properly. It's like he can't, he's like he's lost control of it almost. And I'm thinking, oh my God, something's really wrong here. So I said, call the vet right now. We're going to get him out. This is, he's not right. The second I saw him, I knew he wasn't right. Just the look on his face. And he's got obvious pain signals as well. So we call the vet. They come out. They do all the checks. They check heart rate. They check lungs. They check temperature. He takes bloods just to be sure. Uh, he checks the gut activity because that's a big indicator in horses. Everything normal. Everything normal. That's weird. That's very weird. So what he did is get him some pain medication and a steroid injection, so anti-inflammatories, uh, to see what happens and says, monitor him closely overnight, see how it goes. I, I did my last check at about half nine at night and went to sleep, struggled to sleep that night. But when I did, I was out cold because I was exhausted, obviously been crying a lot as well because I was really worrying. Generally, we thought, I thought, what if I lose him? That was the biggest thing, I might lose him. And that's a big fear because he's my everything. He's my baby. Next morning, I go out 
and it's just before 6 a.m. and I'm just about to get onto the yard and I just hear this drip noise and I know the sound of slobber hitting the floor, like saliva hitting the floor. I sprint in, he's leaning over the door, he's got slobber drooling down, like a pool of it beneath him. His entire face is swollen, which you don't see in horses, it's very rare you see something like that. And his tongue was like this between his front teeth and swollen up and he had this dead look to his eyes so, just not right at all I noticed he hadn't he hadn't been for a poo in the night he hadn't drank it he had drank like a tiny bit he hadn't eaten anything all of these are indicators something's very wrong because horses they eat for like 18 hours a day they're constantly eating so when they're not big big problem I sprint back into the house wake mum up I say we've got to call the vet he, he's really he's gone downhill so calls the vet, says we're bringing him in. We, very, we back the trailer right up to the, the yard, yard doors, because we've got a big American barn. Load him up really gently. I travelled in the trailer with him, not something I would normally do, not something I would, in any circumstance, but this, I felt like I needed to monitor him, make sure he was okay. Mum's in the car, I can call her if, some, if shit hits the fan. If, if, I can call her if this goes wrong. Um, so I'm travelling in the bit, just the partition behind him and keeping an eye on him, and I notice he's bumping his head repeatedly on the bars. He's like he can't really stop himself from doing that, so I actually went through and spent the half an hour journey with my arm in front of his face, and the other one just kind of here, just padding him, so he didn't keep hitting his head and just kind of holding him. He's obviously just really struggling. We did note he was walking better, slightly better this mor that morning as well. His hind end seemed to have regained some control, still wobbly, but better. So we thought maybe that's a good sign. Get to the vets and they're like, yeah, he's really not okay. They did a whole bunch of tests, x-rays, nothing. So the head and neck x-rays, because maybe there's been an injury there, something, something going wrong there, nothing. They did a nasal scope so they could analyze, I can't remember what it is, but it's basically like nerve endings that, you can, that come out the base of the brain and you can see them through the nasal passages. They checked the function of the larynx as well. All of it came back normal. They they did an ultrasound, checking lungs, checking hind gut, things like that. Nothing, no signs of that, because they thought maybe there's something going on in there. It's not, nothing's really indicating that, but it's, it's always good to, fate, to rule anything out. So they're pretty stumped. We also noticed his reflexes weren't right. I was holding him from the front when they were x-raying him, and we noticed, I noticed, one eye was kind of a little more closed but blinking, and the other one was fully open and just not reacting, not blinking at all. I was like, hey, is this something to be concerned about? And they said, yeah, that's weird. So they t did some little checks on his eyes and they noticed his reflexes were kind of dull. They do this thing where they kind of flick towards the eye to get the, the blink reaction, the reflex, the blink reflex. Really kind of dull, he was really slow. They did some clicks and claps around near his ears to see if they would get a response there. Again, not really responding. It was like his nervous system had shut down. Again, I'm repeatedly trying not to cry throughout this entire thing because I'm just so scared. And seeing an animal that you love in that kind of state, I hope no one ever has to go through it. It's, it's horrible. Anyone with animals will understand. I mean, I know people hate this, but I guess it's kind of, I see my animals as my babies, uh, my children as such. And, you know, it's like a parent, if their child isn't okay, it's the same worry. It's the same level of worry for me personally. So they're kind of stumped. They can't figure out what's going on. What they do is they take him into the stable. They said, we're going to put him on a drip because he hasn't, he still hasn't eaten or drank anything and he's not passed any, anything. Uh, they did do a rectal exam and found there was feces in there, but obviously hasn't passed it. It's very dry because he's not drinking enough. They also had taken bloods and they noticed a small elevation in white blood cells, which suggested possibly fighting some sort of infection. So maybe, but still no idea. So they decided to keep him in on an IV drip. It's very clever how they do it as well. They had like the, the drip bags on the ceiling um, and a long coiled tube that comes down to the horse and what they do is they kind of put two plaits one at the base of the neck one uh, further up the neck and they loop it through there secure it loop it through the other one secure it, and then put it into the catheter in the neck which i think is really clever because i thought how on earth do you put a drip on a horse because they are moving constantly you can't restrain a horse like that it's not it just doesn't really work that well and they're also known to panic if they get tangled in things clever solution so they put him on that. They tried to give him a little bit of feed. He was trying to eat, but really struggling and struggling to swallow as well. Um, but he wanted to eat. So that's a good sign. 
So we left him there, and obviously I'm like, I know he's in the best care, but I'm still worrying about him. Headed home and just anxiously spent the day waiting to know if there was going to be some sort of update, how is he doing. I messaged mum about midday to say, hey, any updates? And she said, nothing yet, they're going to call about 5pm. So about quarter past 20 past 5, I dropped her a message to see, hey, is what any more updates? So what they said was he'd made a very speedy turnaround. He'd suddenly brightened up, not long after we'd left, actually, within an hour or two. He was walking around, he's eating, he's drinking, he's a bit more alert, he's more comfortable, uh, great. So he's on antibiotics, he's on anti-inflammatories, he's on fluids, just to see if that all helps. And he's on fluids. Basically, the thing is then to monitor how he is and gently wean him off any of the anti-inflammatories and stuff to see if other things flare up because we still don't know what's going on. I'm recording this on Tuesday. This all happened on Sunday. Uh, so it's kind of been tentatively waiting for any updates. Hasn't made a huge change. He's just a lot better in himself. He's come, they're taking him off the drip today. They're, I think, stopping, they're stopping the injected antibiotics and hopefully getting him onto oral antibiotics instead. So obviously I can administer them when he eventually comes home. We don't know how long that's going to be yet, but it's all very much monitor, see how he goes. They keep updating us. These last few days have been unbelievably stressful. It's been so intense to watch my horse like that. And he's my everything. He, <sighs> those of you who have dogs and you adore them, they're your everything. It's the same as that. It's exactly the same. I adore him. He's, he's my boy. So I just wanted to kind of let you guys know why there's no footage from me working Sunday. <sighs> This has all gone on and just wanted to kind of keep you guys in the loop. But I'm going to be back at Addington working for Hoof Prince Voters again this weekend for the Pet Plan Winter Dressage Championships. I'll keep you guys updated on all that and follow along for the next little bit of what's happening. <laughs>